abdominal strain. The Lakers insider Dave McMenamin will be here in just a minute to give us the latest on that. The last time we saw the Lakers, embarrassing loss to Minnesota. Anthony Davis went off after the game, wasn't pleased with his teammates, said there was no effort. Davis literally putting his money where his mouth is. If nobody's going to get open, I'm just going to throw it to myself. If nobody wants to be there, I'll be there for myself. Davis at 27 in the first half, 12 for 16 from the floor. Lakers had the lead at the break by five. Spurs are a 4-8 team. I heard Steve Kerr, of course, is so close with Greg Popovich say, Pop knows they're not winning another title in San Antonio before his days are done. It's just about trying to get back to a level to see who the successor will be. DeJounte Murray. Now, he had himself an incredible game. Thaddeus Young's going to cut it to five, and you're thinking to yourself, all right, is this going to happen again? Lakers playing down to the level of their competition. McDermott from downtown. Murray got the triple-double, though, 22-10-10. It's a one-possession game. And then the kid they used to call THT when he was in Ames. THT in L.A. He finished with 17, Taylor and Horton Tucker. And Carmelo's had quite a resurgence with the Lakers, particularly from downtown. His numbers from three have been great. Davis had 34 and 15. Carmelo gave him a spark, and the Lakers win it. Against the Spurs, if you take a look at the shot chart for Anthony Davis, pretty darn efficient, and most of his points came from inside the paint where he dominated. There to see the game in person was our Lakers insider, Dave McMenamin. He made the arduous jog across the street to join us live on SportsCenter today. All right, so Dave, we mentioned they had that pathetic third quarter Friday night. They gave up 40 points to the Wolves, lost. Davis wasn't happy. Today they flipped the script. What were the adjustments that were made to help them win? Well, Zubin, first of all, they took care of business in the third quarter. And in today's game, this is the really the first time they were able to put a stamp on that quarter when they had been outscored by more points in the third quarter than any team had been outscored by any quarter uh, throughout the NBA season so far. But you start with Anthony Davis. He started at the big man position. There was no DeAndre Jordan. He didn't play a lick. Kent Bazemore got a DNP for the first time all season long. Anthony Davis was a tone setter, but beyond him, there was Carmelo Anthony making his first start of the season, and there you see him on the screen, Talon Horton Tucker. Anthony Davis said it was an unreal debut by Tucker, who uh, suffered a, a, a broken thumb, a, a torn ligament in his thumb during the preseason in his shooting hands. He was able to come back there with the brace on and still affect the game on both ends of the court. Yeah, very quietly, I know LeBron has said how happy he is with that particular addition he's playing quite well and we should mention by the way that the Lakers have now won four games without LeBron James in the lineup half of them have come against San Antonio so something about the Spurs that brings out the best in the LeBron-less Lakers how much longer will they be LeBron-less missed his sixth straight game with the abdominal strain any word on a timetable Zubin I spoke to a source close to LeBron James today and I asked when are we going to see him on the court and it was a one word answer quote soon now, could soon be tomorrow against the Chicago Bulls, second night of a back-to-back? -back. I don't believe so. Frank Vogel said LeBron has looked quite good in his on-court workouts. Uh, he is progressing nicely, but he hasn't been able to play any contact basketball. And quite frankly, this is a Lakers veteran team who doesn't have that many practices uh, to begin with. And so they'll want to get him some reps underneath him. I was told that this was an issue that LeBron knows that it's not connected to the groin injury from a couple seasons ago, but because it is that core uh, type of injury, he wants to make sure there's no connection. And we know that that was a lingering issue. He doesn't want this to be lingering at all. Make sure it's fully behind him before he gets back on the court. The Lakers start a five game road trip this week, starting in Milwaukee. Maybe LeBron versus the champs would be the first time we see him. Now, that would be something, but you're right, because before he got to the Lakers, he was probably the most durable player we'd seen in the NBA in his era. But since he's gotten to L.A., it's been a little bit different. Age just catches up to everyone. We'll see what happens. They got the Bulls tomorrow night, one of the hottest teams in the NBA. That's our Dave McMenamin. On the way, tonight here on SportsCenter, missing the King. Without him this season, 4-2, four 4-4 and two, four and four without. But I mentioned two of those came against San Antonio. Again, a litmus test against the surging Bulls tomorrow night. We'll see. Clearly, it doesn't feel like LeBron will be there for that. Davis may be pinpointing that. Frank had mentioned that he was impressed with how you were able to kind of stay in shape, even though you can't replicate game action uh, since you hadn't played since October. What did you do to try to get yourself to make sure you were going to be able to hit the ground running? Um, just, you know, coming into uh, leading up to this week and this game, um, I was doing a lot of on-court stuff with, you know, the strength coaches and uh, 
you know, getting a lot of on court, you know, working, running, uh, just doing things like that, just to try and get my wind wind up before I got out there today. I know Rob and Frank both talked about your defense and how they were excited about some potential growth there. Wondered what you focused on there, and uh, if you if you saw some of that play out in your first game today. Um, well, after tonight, I feel like I could have been a little bit better, but uh, I had some good moments, and uh, you know, I'm just happy for that. That's something I have to do this year, so I'm just trying to lock into it. Tell what was the thing you missed the most in the last whatever month uh, that you weren't being able to play with these guys? Uh, being able to play here in Staples, uh, you know, it's a, it's a real feeling. And uh, just being able to be with my teammates again. You know, I always tell everybody, like, just with the group that we have, actually being out, being able to get out there and play with them is just a blessing for me. So I'm just appreciative of it. Taylor, and going forward, do you foresee yourself as a starter or do you know what your role will be? Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, come out here and be the best that I can. Uh, I'm not really focused on that. I'll let the coaches in the front office figure out what, what they want to do as far as that. But I'm going to just come in and do it, the same thing that I do every night. So we'll see from there. Uh, Talon, in the second half of the fourth quarter, you had two finger rolls um, that, that were pretty contested at the lip. How did they feel coming off your hand, and and where is your thumb at right now in terms of the sensation, mobility, et cetera? Uh, I'm just getting better now. Um, uh, they were telling me if, if I felt like I was going to re-injure my thumb or if I felt any way like that, I shouldn't have played. So I wasn't really thinking about my thumb uh, when I was out there. I was just trying to play. Uh, I was trying to block shots with my right hand, doing everything. So just being able to you know, just play with a free mind and not worry about that was, was great for me to have tonight. Taylor, just forecasting when LeBron's going to come back and, and just how, how much more comfortable are you playing off the ball versus the, all the times that you have been able to get to the rim on the ball when you think about Russ in, in that equation? What's the, the focus and what do the coaches want, you know? Uh, I'm just, you know, I don't have a problem playing off the ball. That's just anything to do to try and win, get another ring is the, the most important thing for me. So I feel like I can help it on the ball or off the ball. So just being able to, to do that is going to be key for me in this game um, uh, and I was wondering how that mentality affected you and getting 19 points in the first quarter um, just coming out I know my 12 o'clock 12.30 starts have been slow our team we haven't had many but the one we had in, I think it was preseason it's kind of slow um, just knowing myself from the past couple years um, it's a different routine different mentality because you're everything is earlier a lot earlier um, I just want to come back and just, just try to dominate the game, um, do what I can to, to get the team going. You know, that's the type of energy you need uh, from our bench, from you know, your star player, your role players, when the, when the game is this early. Um, and that's what I just try to do, just try to lead the team best way I can to, to help us get, to, to get the win. E.B., how impressed were you by Taylor and how much have you seen him grow from the time you guys got here with him to this point? Um, to come out his first game and do what he did, um, it was unreal. You know, he's, he's a young guy who loves to learn. Um, you know, he comes in and you know, scored the ball, it was great defensively for us, um, made big plays. Um, and I was impressed, you know, first game and to come in and do what he did to help us win, it was it's huge and it's a testament of his hard work. You know, a lot of guys, you come back, you're kind of rusty. Um, but he came in like he been playing with us this whole time. Um, and it's the work he's been able to put in, you know, even though he had his, his injury, you know, still been able to take his work seriously, his conditioning seriously. Um, and it's also that he's 20 years old, too. So, um, But to, to come in and to play the way he played definitely, you know, helped us get this one. Okay. Eighty, two quick ones for you. First of all, in the first quarter, you threw the ball off the backboard to yourself and put it home. Is, is that something that hit you in the moment? Is that something you've done before? I, I haven't seen it. you do it since you become a Laker. Um, talk to me about that play. Um, I just had nowhere to go with the ball. Um, I've done it before, like in high school and stuff, but uh, I don't think I've ever done it before in, in the league. But it was just something that just... I thought of it the, in the moment. You know, I had nowhere to go with the ball, and the you know, shot clock run down. Just, just go see, see what happens. <laughs> uh, and, and bigger picture, 
Wayne's back and has had a couple of good games. Talon, you said it was a remarkable debut for him. Frank told us that LeBron is starting to look like himself in workouts. Do you feel like this could be a stretch upcoming for you guys, particularly with this long road trip where you can start to kind of make your mark? Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's what we want. We want, to, we want to be able to put ourselves in a position to win each and every ball game, uh, especially at start. Guys starting to come back. Um, we want to stay in the rhythm. And uh, I'm not sure everyone will be able to have a star like Taylor, but um, it will be nice. You know, when Brian comes back, K-9, T.A., um, Austin, you know, we start to get our guys, starting to get our guys back. Um, and we want to make a run. We want to make a, a nice, go on a nice little winning streak um, and be the team that we know we can be. Um, but it starts with our, our defense. And I feel like we, we had moments where, you know, we looked like the old Lakers where we mess up and, and, and break down our coverages. But for the most part, um, we look really good. AD over here. Um, Frank said that he feels like that this starting, uh, the smaller starting group is kind of the, the right thing for, for right now, and, and he likes the way you guys have looked. Uh, what has what the smaller group done for you offensively in, in terms of just the spacing and then also seeing Talon and Russ get downhill, kick out the shooters? Like, how, how do you feel like the offense has looked with that smaller group? Um, we get to run. Uh, the lob threat is there. Even when we're, we're big, the lob threat is there. Um, but we have four shooters around a you know a dynamic roller you know who, who creates a uh, crowd and draw attention when you know when I roll to the basket so now if guys help we kick it out to our shooters if if they don't then we have a lob and we got Taylor Russ who can get downhill um, and finish at the basket so um, it's just a different you know look that we have um, it looks really good and you know if coach wants to stick with it then that's what we're going to do. But, you know, we also have games where we have to, when we have to go, you know, to a bigger lineup um, with DJ or Dwight. Hey, first, real quickly, I just want to ask you what's going on with your left index finger. No, I just thought it looked cool to match my thumb. So, nothing. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, any other information on that? Or, nope. No, nah, that's, that's, that's all. Okay. Well, uh, I just want to look ahead uh, tomorrow. Playing the Bulls, obviously, always a big game for you. But um, you know, is there any uh, special emotion with playing Alex Caruso, your old teammate, and, and having who? Alex Caruso? I don't know that guy. Yeah. <laughs> no. no uh, it's gonna be fun playing against AC again. You know, uh, all the stuff he brought to our team to uh, win a championship and to our team last year. Um, you know, he he was a big part of what we what we did here. Um, Probably a little bit more emotional for him than than me, you know, um, just because he's back here in L.A. And he's usually more emotional when I'm back in Chicago. But you know, anytime I get a chance to play the Bulls, um, it's always fun, you know, to go against your hometown team. Um, but it's going to be fun and exciting, you know, to play against A.C. and, and you know, try to get that win against him. Anthony, just kind of going forward, the, the type of energy that you brought early today, I mean, is that something that you think you need to kind of bring on a game-by-game -game basis, or are there maybe some situations where, you know, uh, maybe you defer more to other people? No, I have to bring the energy every night. Um, you know, I, I try to bring the energy and let the guys feed off of me. You know, when I'm playing that way, playing a lot of energy, um, guys usually, you know, feed off of that and, and do the same thing. So it's my job as a leader to bring that energy. Um, and let guys know the type of pace and, and flow that we're going to play with tonight. Um, and when I don't, the other guys don't. Um, but it's my job to, to bring that every night, and, and I expect these guys to follow. And had a nice debut, and Frank told us pregame that, that LeBron's looking good in his workouts. Uh, did you see a runway coming up where you can start to build a momentum because it's been so start and go for the team so far? No, no. Just one day at a time, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> we hope so, but we just take one day at a time. Um, slowly get guys back and um, get into a rhythm. Rush straight ahead. Did, did you see I see y'all. I see y'all. If just go ask a question, I don't got to look at y'all. Okay. <laughs> just so we're clear. Okay. I'm just sometimes I'll be watching TV or something. All right. But I hear y'all, though. Okay. All right. Did you see a more determined Anthony Davis tonight? Um, I thought he was aggressive. I thought he did a good job of um, using his size, using his ability to be able to attack the basket. Um, 
and be aggressive, and we need them, you know, to do that. Um, you know, from start to finish, you need a good job of that. Even when they doubled them, you did a good job of making the right decisions, making the right plays um, in the second half, and being and being able to take on a double team and make the make plays on the, on the backside. <clears throat> Russ, uh, sort of. Oh, so, uh, just as sort of a follow up to what Dave was asking just then, are you getting a better feel for? where the three-point shooters are going to be in this offense, Malik, Wayne, some of those guys? Um, a little bit. A little bit still trying to figure out, make sure that they're most comfortable and find a way to be able to get them the ball when they need it, um, especially in shop-ready positions and uh, still trying to figure that out. Russ, we'll, we'll call on you when we're ready for you. Thank you. <laughs> he said, yeah, my turn. Bill? Russ, you guys, um, they, they got it within two with like two and a half minutes left, and you guys answered uh, really aggressively with Taylor getting downhill, and then uh, I think Mello hit a three. Um, what what happened after they cut it within two? Anything in that timeout? And then what did you make of the way you guys came together to close that out? Um, we knew they made a run. Um, now we just take a deep breath and figure out how to execute offense, find a ways to close the game out, which um, most close games, we've been pretty good. This